Jacob, Yaakov, the last patriarch, dies in Egypt, and his son Joseph, Yosef, the prime minister of Egypt, gets reluctant permission from Pharaoh to honor his father's dying wish to bury his father in Israel. So Yosef heads to Israel with a huge funeral procession, his brothers and other family members, Pharaoh's servants, the Egyptian elders and dignitaries, horsemen and chariots, an incredibly imposing funeral procession. We know what it looks like nowadays is when a dignitary passes away, there's the police escort and people stop and watch and salute and pay their respects. But something strange happens when the funeral procession reaches the border of Egypt and Israel. The procession is detained. Now I ask you, who would stop a funeral procession? What kind of monster or mongrel wouldn't let someone bury their dead? Other than maybe the FBI trying to arrest some crime family members during a funeral. Come on, let's go. You're under arrest for violation Title 2C, Chapter 37, Section 2 of the New Jersey Penal Code. Yeah, hey, go ahead. Last year I made bail so fast, my soup was still warm when I got home. All right, come on, keep moving. So who was it that detained Yako's funeral procession? It was the kings and the princes of Canaan and Ishmael. And they didn't just detain it to ask for passports or visas to allow entree to the Holy Land. They detained it because they planned to go to war. They eventually stood down when they saw Yosef's crown because they realized that at that time and that day and age, it wasn't a good idea to go to war against Egypt, the reigning superpower. But why were they there to go to war in the first place? The Medrash tells us that they wanted to stop Yaakov from being buried, from being buried in the Ma'aras HaMachpelah in Hebron. Why? Because if the third patriarch, Yaakov, gets buried there, that will establish in perpetuity a Jewish foothold in the Holy Land, and they wanted to stop that. Yaakov knew this was going to happen. That's why he gave his sons so much detail. He told them to bury him in Hebron, in the Ma'ar Samachpelah, in the field, in the cave that his grandfather bought, where his grandfather Abraham, Avraham, and his grandmother were buried, where his parents were buried, and where he had buried his wife Leah. He knew that there were going to be objections, and he knew that his burial would establish that foothold. He was telling his sons, don't back down, don't be embarrassed, we bought it, it's ours, we earned it. That's where I have to be buried. And nothing's changed in the last thousands of years. It shouldn't take a presidential proclamation to remind us that Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, is the capital of Israel, the capital of the Jewish people. It shouldn't matter what any other nations say. As the mayor of Jerusalem put it recently so beautifully, you can't put a shovel in the ground in Jerusalem without hitting thousands of years of Jewish history. We're now uncovering the very stones where kings and prophets walked 3,000 years ago. The UN cannot deny these facts on the ground. So no matter what anyone else, what any other country, what any enemy says, Israel is ours. Jerusalem is its capital. We bought it, we earned it, bought it with our blood, sweat, and tears. We've had a connection there for thousands of years. We're there, and we're not going anywhere. Thank you.